Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Batwoman Season 2. We just got done with the premiere, it finished about 5-10 minutes ago. It was really good. So let's break it down, we're going to go through every single plot point that is of interest. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. Remember guys, we're going to be covering Batwoman at least up until the Flash and Superman Lois are on because, you know, hopefully you guys are interested. This is our first Arrowverse show back. I was certainly very hyped for this episode and I think some of you guys know I was a bit behind on season one and this has totally pulled me back in because it's completely new and it's exciting. So yeah, season two, episode one, the premiere, our first Arrowverse show back and man, was it a good episode? I really, really enjoyed it. It's not like the greatest episode ever, but it was a really, really solid premiere and it was a great way to introduce Ryan Wilder for the first time and I thought Javisa Leslie did a great job and there was lots of references to Supergirl in this episode, which I found very, very exciting personally because obviously I'm a huge Supergirl fan and I think you guys know that. Anyway, so let's go ahead and break this episode down. So it starts off with Kate's plane. Everyone is searching for Kate Kane. Whatever happened to Kate Kane is the title of the episode and that is basically what everyone is asking throughout it. Same thing for Ryan, but Ryan actually shows up at the crash site and she finds the Batwoman suit, the bat suit in the crash and she picks it up and you're like, oh, this is cool, because the music starts coming in, and you're like, oh, she's she's found it, she's gonna be Batwoman, this is a good way to introduce it, and I thought they really did a good job with that, so that kind of set up her as Batwoman, right at the start of the episode, like, you know, literally a few minutes into it, so they really got straight into the Ryan Wilder stuff, and I think they did a good job there, and then Kate's dad is going a bit mad over her disappearance and you know they think Kate is in the river and basically there is this whole mystery and this mystery is going to continue onwards whatever happened to Kate Kane and you know people getting letters people getting things from Kate like she was supposed to go to National City on this flight to meet Cara Danvers we'll get to that in a minute to deliver something very important for this episode and very important for what happens at the ending which I can't wait to talk about and we'll get to that in a minute but anyway let's move on to the next point and so Bruce Wayne and I put that in inverted commas shows up and he meets Luke Fox and Luke is like where have you been all this time blah 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 and we know he's the fake Batman he's not Bruce Wayne he is Tommy Elliot who has the face of Bruce Wayne thanks to Alice and so that happens and obviously that's kind of exciting to see this kind of fake Bruce Wayne but then, you know, that kind of gets resolved as we go down this episode. And like I said, lots of Supergirl references. The first reference and one of the biggest references was Cara Danvers. And they talked about her and they talked about Kate flying to National City to give Kara a piece of kryptonite. And the kryptonite is apparently the only thing that can penetrate the Batsuit. So, again, I know this was referenced before. But this was super cool, especially in the premiere and considering that Supergirl isn't on for such a long time to get references directly to Supergirl and to National City, I would say is really, really exciting. Like they've shot this stuff and they got Javicia in and they were like, yeah, we're going to talk about Kryptonite, we're going to talk about National City and Cara Danvers. So great crossover stuff right there, even just with referencing. And so we get a flashback kind of montage that repeats in multiple times in the episode and this moment definitely is one of the definitive moments or if not the definitive moment of what dominates Ryan's want to be Batwoman. Because this was a scene and this was a moment where they got attacked by Alice and we'll get to what actually happens in that in a minute because that comes just after this and so we get these flashbacks she puts on the suit in a montage she looks great and she says time to be powerful and I thought that was a really great moment I was like yes this is Batwoman and so I think I'm totally in for her being Batwoman and I know it's a replacement and I think they actually did the right choice with picking someone who can so easily fit into the boots of Batwoman because I feel like Javisa does a really good job of just being so cool 
and she kind of just slides into the Batwoman role. She's like, no, I'm not giving you your suit back. That's what Ryan says to Mary and Luke at one point. And so, yeah, I really dig the whole dynamic of what's going on there and also between the three of those people. And so Alice and the fake Batman, fake Bruce Wayne, aka Tommy Elliot together, Alice kills someone. And then Alice explains her original plan to kill Kate, this kind of whole orchestrated event that she wanted to do, but she failed to do so. So she is kind of a bit upset throughout this episode that she wasn't the one to actually get through and, you know, make her father actually shoot her and be like, oh, Kate is Batwoman. And so, yeah, we'll get to that in just a second. And so Sophie thinks... Kate was targeted, she won't stop until she finds her suit, she references that, so this whole mystery is definitely going to continue on past this one episode, so people are going to be referencing Kate, like there's a newspaper, whatever happened to Kate Kane, that shows up multiple times in the episode, and so Luke and Mary find Ryan in the bat suit just after this, and so she reveals that she won't give up the bat suit until her mum's killer is dead, and you're like, Hmm, we had that flashback. I presume that is where her mum was actually killed, but who is the killer? And so we get into it with Ryan's backstory being explained by Mary. So everything about like where she came from, Ryan and her family were attacked by Alice and her gang. So that was the big twist in the episode, one of the big twists, as that reveals their connection and why Alice is still relevant to Ryan rather than just Alice being Kate's sister. So I thought that connection was actually very good and I thought it was very smart and it definitely gives a reason for Alice to stick around. And so she and her gang were the ones who killed Ryan's mum. So I'm interested to know, what do you think of that twist? I thought that twist was very clever. Anyway, let's move on to the next bit. So Luke is hellbent on destroying this kryptonite. He believes Kara, he believes Kate is dead because of him pushing Kate to get on that plane to go to the National City and give it to Kara. So I really liked Luke in this episode. I thought he was really, really good. And his whole kind of regretful kind of storyline with him and him blaming himself over Kate's disappearance or potential death. And, you know, the kryptonite stuff was interesting that he blamed himself for it. And so, yeah, Mary is with him and they find out that Alice made Tommy Elliot a new face. So he shows up as Bruce Wayne. So that was a reveal for them. Obviously, we kind of knew that he was Tommy Elliot. This wasn't the real Bruce Wayne. There was definitely something up, and obviously that got revealed to the characters. And so you get this cool scene towards the end of the episode. We'll get to that in just a second, but that relates to Tommy Elliot facing off against Ryan Wilder. And so then, you know, Alice reveals to Kate's dad that Kate was Batwoman and she basically, you know, lays it all on him and he's just shocked and Alice just leaves the room and... So now getting onto this Tommy Elliot thing, so he chases Ryan in the Batmobile, so in the cave, in the Batcave, he finds the Batmobile firing a missile at Ryan, he's chasing her in the Batmobile and she's just in her van where she lives and so he fires a kryptonite bullet at Batwoman and it pierces her suit and apparently that's the only thing that can pierce her suit because earlier in the episode Batwoman was bulletproof but she's not bulletproof from this and she takes it pretty fine and you're like oh this is normal like oh I guess she's just really strong or something and so Ryan beats Tommy to a pulp his face is peeled off and it's a bit disgusting but yeah it was a great moment and it showed how much of a skilled fighter she is, she was able to take on Tommy Elliot, I know he's a bit deranged and everything, but she really just beat him up, and it was great, and I love watching it, and so, yeah, you have that kryptonite bullet, it's lodged in her, and we'll get to that in just a minute, as we head towards the end of this review, because we're getting towards the end of the breakdown points, and so, they get the Batmobile back, Ryan will be using the car at some point, we know that, because of recent set photos. So Tommy Elliot is also heading back to Arkham Asylum because he has stopped after he's beaten up. And so Ryan gives the Batsuit back to Luke and Mary, which then leads on to Sophie and Julia Pennyworth talking about Kate and Julia is kind of questioning, like, do you love Kate still? So that was a bit interesting. And then what happens just after this, you get the delivery of a letter to Sophie and this is from Kate. I believe Ruby Rose was recast 
with her voice because it didn't sound like her so maybe that's me going crazy but you guys can confirm that I'm pretty sure someone else did the voiceover and so this letter is delivered from Kate to Sophie and then the final scene of the episode was one of the most interesting twists of the whole episode and this was the kryptonite bullet that pierced her suit actually lodged into her yes it hurt but also it's bleeding into her bloodstream so what is going on there that is interesting is she gonna get some sort of superpowers is kryptonite gonna be some sort of poison is it gonna actually infect her it looks like it's infecting her so that cliffhanger is definitely gonna be answered in next week's episode on sunday so that is about it for this breakdown slash review for season 2 episode 1 of Batwoman. So if you did enjoy my Batwoman season 2 episode 1 review, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any Batwoman videos because we're going to be covering it at this time every week at least up until The Flash comes back February 23rd. Also they were advertising heavily on, on the episode that Superman and Lois is going to have a 2 hour premiere event. It was worded a little bit confusingly, some people thought that, you know, it was like a two hour event, it's gonna be like two hours straight of Superman and Lois, but apparently it's just The Flash and Superman and Lois are coming out, and it's gonna be like a two hour premiere event because the two shows are coming back. So yeah, be on the lookout for all the videos, and remember, check out my recent videos, and I'll be uploading daily videos as per normal throughout the week, and then Batwoman again on Sunday night next week. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.